Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll talk about conditioners. So you can consider conditioners as a decision-making operation using if and else syntax. And this conditional statement is considered as one of the key components in programming because you can create various different logic inside your program. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the previous video, we've talked about the operators and we went through some examples of how we can generate booleans using different operator types in an expression. So the conditional statement that we're going to talk about in this video uses exactly that. But the only difference here is that we will put either if, else if, or else keywords in front of those expressions to make the expression as a conditional statement. Okay, so let me show you an example. So I'm going to create two variables, number one, then set it equal to 5, number 2, set it equal to 2, and let's write a print statement. So number 1 plus number 2 equal equals 7. So as we learned in the last video that I'm checking whether adding number 1 to number 2 will equal to 7 by using this equality operator. So if we print this out, this expression will return either true or first. So if I run this, you will see true because you're adding 5 plus 2 is 7. So the conditional statements that we're going to talk about today uses the expression that we have here. So the keywords that we'll be using is if, er if, which is the shorthand for the else if and else. So if you want to create an if statement, all you have to do is just write if and then just copy and paste the statement that we have here and then end the if statement with a colon like this. And then once you type enter, you will actually get inside the if block here. So let me just write a simple print statement, print the value is 7. So the print statement that we have here will only be executed when the expression that we have at the if statement returns true. So if I run this as is, it's actually going to execute this print statement that we have here. So let me first test it out. So comment this and then run this. You will see the value is 7 because adding number 1 to number 2 is 7. So that this expression returned true and that's why this print statement got printed out. So if I change the value of this to 6, then this expression will return first so that you should not see the value is 7. So if I run this one more time, then you won't see anything here. Okay, so let me talk about the error if statement. So I'm going to write error if number 1 plus number 2 is less than 7 and then I'm going to write value is less than 7. Okay. So this else if statement also takes an expression that returns either true or first. And if it returns true, it's actually going to go into this print statement and print this uh, value out. And you can have how many number of else if statement that you wish to have. But the else if statement always needs to be under the if statement that you have here. And the if and else if statement that we have, if any one of the expression returns true, then the Python will stop evaluating all the rest of the conditioners that we have below. So if this statement returns true, then all other if statements that you have below here will not be evaluated. If this if statement returns true, then this error if will not be evaluated. And let me write another error if statement. So I'm going to write a chain comparison here. So I'm going to say 6 greater than number 1 plus number 2 less than 10. So in this case, the, the numbers that fit into this uh, range will be print value is either 7, 8, or 9 because as you can see, this is not inclusive. And let me change back to this 7. So if I run this as is, the first expression will return true. So none of the else if statement that's below this if statement will not be evaluated because the Python already found one expression that returned true. So let's try to run this and you will see value is 7 and you will not see value is either 7, 8 or 9 even though the 7 actually fits in this range. And as I explained, the reason why this didn't get printed out is because the Python already found the true here. So even though adding number 1 to number 2 is 7, so it actually fits into this uh, range, it's not going to actually execute to this print statement and let me write an else statement so else so the else keyword does not take any expression and we can consider the else statement as the all other scenarios that we haven't actually covered in the above if and else if statement so in the else block we can say that print value is greater than 9 because in the first scenario we are covering whether the value is equal to 7 
In the second scenario, we are covering whether value is less than 7. And in the third scenario, we are checking the range so that the value have to be either 7, 8, or 9. So in the earth block, it is safe for us to actually assume that the value will be greater than 9. So now we have a one complete conditional statement here. So if we look at this, uh, the conditional statement always start with the if, and then it can be followed by the multiple else if statement, and then it can have one else statement at the very end. So the key thing to remember here is that when you have a if statement followed by multiple else if statement, it's gonna work as a mutually exclusive. So meaning when Python actually starts to evaluate all the expressions that we have here, it's gonna find the expression that returned true for the first time, and it's gonna ignore all the rest of the conditioners that we have below. So what that means here is that when you have a multiple expressions that can return true, so in this case, the first one and this one, it's only gonna actually evaluate the first one because the first one will return true. And so that Python will actually ignore all the rest of the conditioners that we have at the below. So how can they actually make this conditioners not mutually exclusive? So meaning that how can they actually see the result of the print statement for the expressions that will actually evaluate the true? So in this case, this one and this one. So what we can do here is that we can replace the else if statement and else statement with the if statements. So we will have four independent if statements instead of the else if and else. So let me copy this and let's also comment this so that we don't see the duplicate result. And then let me paste it down here. And let's make this if statement and same here as well. Number one plus number two is greater than nine. So now we have a four independent if statement. So in this case, Python will actually try to go if statement by if statement, meaning that it's actually gonna evaluate all the expressions that we have here because each of the if statements is independent. So if I run this one more time, you will see uh, two results. The first one is coming from the first one where value is seven. And then the second one is value is either seven, eight, nine coming from this if statement. Okay, so now let's try to build a simple calculator using the conditioners and then the inputs provided by the end users. So I'm gonna create three variables. So first number, input, enter the first number, and then second number as well, input, enter the second number, and then operator, input, enter the operator from plus, minus, multiply, and divide and some more space here so that we can distinguish. So now we have a three variables all coming from the user input. And now let's try to build a conditioner. So I'm gonna have an if statement, if operator equal equal plus. So this if statement is specifying that the operator that end user give us is the plus sign. Then we're gonna actually add the first number by the second number. So print first number plus second number. Else if, operator equal equal minus then we want to actually subtract first number by second number like that and then else if operator equal equal multiply then print first number times second number and the last one is the else statement because we only have a one uh, operator left which is a division so i'm just going to use the else for now and say print first number by by second number and we also have to put the integer here because we want to actually convert the string into the integer so that we can actually calculate and so now we have everything ready let's try to run this you will see the first number so i'm going to say five two and plus and you will see seven at the bottom and let's try one more time with a division I'm going to say 6, 2, and divide, and you will see a 3.0. So then what's going to happen if I put an operator that's not in here? So let's try that out. So I'm going to run it one more time and say a 6, 2, with a percent sign. Then you will still see a 3.0 because uh, everything other than plus, minus, multiplication actually forge into this else block. And in the else block, we do the division here. So let's just replace this else with another else if. And I'm going to say operator equal equal division colon and then we're going to actually do the division here. So let's try to run this one more time and 6, 2 and percent sign. It's not going to return anything because we don't have any conditioners for that. So let's also have an else block here and say print 
operator provided is not valid so that we can actually throw some message to end users so if i run this one more time and say six two percent sign you will see a message saying that operator provided is not valid okay so now let's try to create a nested if statement so in order for you to create the nested if statement all you have to do is just put another if statement under the if statement that you have here so i'm going to say if first number plus second number is greater than 100 i want to print out different message saying that the value is greater than 100 and also in the else block let's try to check another operator so instead of us creating another else if let me just do it in the nested way so i'm going to say if operator equal equal to asterisk meaning the exponent i'm going to say print first name power of second Oh, no, I'm sorry, not first name, first number, power of second number. And then we have to put this in the else statement. So let's say else, then you know, we're still going to throw out this message. So what we did here is that we just create a simple uh, one nest if statements, checking that whether the adding the first number and second number is greater than 100. Then we're going to throw out this message. And in here, in the else block, we created another if statement to check whether the operator that came in is a double asterisk. Then we're going to actually do the power of the first number by the second number. So if I just run this, uh, we're going to see the same prompt. So 5, 2, and then power, then you will see 25. And let me also fix this so I can actually add uh, double asterisk like that. And let me also run this one more time so that we can actually check this message. So I'm going to run this and say 50 plus 51, then do a plus. You will see 101 and you will also see a message coming out from here saying that the value is greater than 100. And one thing to keep in mind here, I think it goes without saying, is that the nested if statement here can be only be accessible by the parent if statement. So this nested if statement will be only triggered if the operator is plus, and if adding the first number by second number is greater than 100. And this uh, nested if statement cannot be accessed in the this else if, or this else if, or anywhere else, but only under this plus operator because this nested if statement is actually nested under the operator equal to plus if statement. And same goes without saying for the if operator equals exponent. So this if statement can only be triggered when the operator is not plus minus multiplication or division so that it actually have to first come to the else block. And then if the operator is two asterisk and this print statement will be actually executed. So I know that we talked about the function in our previous videos. So let's try to create some functions to make this uh, calculator be more structured. So I'm going to create a function for this one and function for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponent. And I will also try to create a calculator function that will contain all the conditioners that we see here. So let me first create a function for this. So I'm going to say def user input and then just tap this so that this can actually go inside this function and this function have to return the result. So first number, second number, and operator. So we create a first function here. And let me also create a function for the operator. So I'm going to say def addition. And it's going to be first number and second number. And then just have first number plus second number. Okay. And that's subtraction. First number and second number. Then return first number minus second number. And let me also copy this so that I don't have any typos. And then I'm going to just check this multiplication. And then I'm going to multiply this. Oops. Okay. And then we copy one more time for the division. And then division, and then it's going to divide this. And one final time for the exponent. Exponent, and then to a two asterisk. Like that. Okay, so now we have a five functions for the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponent. Now let's try to create a calculator function that where we can actually contain all the operators. So I'm going to say uh, that calculator function. Okay, and then let me just uh, tap all the conditioners into this function so that it can actually belong to this function. And then the first step for this calculator function is to get the user input, right? So we're gonna actually call this function user input so that we can actually get the values inside the function of the calculator. So I'm gonna say first name, oh, no, sorry, first number, second number, and operator equals user input. Okay, so now we have the operator we can now remove the print statement that we have here and let me also put this uh, nested conditioner into the addition function that we have like that and then we can actually go back to the calculator and replace the print statement with the function that we have so i'm going to say return addition 
and first number, comma, second number. Let me also copy this okay, like that. And then, so this is a subtraction. And then for the multiplication, same thing. Let's change the function name. And then division. Oops. And then say division. And for the exponent, same thing. Exponent. Okay, and then we're gonna leave this print statement as is. You know what, let me actually return this as well because we're gonna wrap this function calculator into the print statement anyway. So I'm gonna say return operator provided is not valid. So it's gonna return the string in this case. So now I think that we have everything here. If you wanna see the result of the function called calculator, we would have to actually call the calculator inside the print statement. So calculator like this. And the reason why we are calling this calculator function inside the print statement is because we do not have any print statement in any of the function that we have except this one. And so that if you want to actually see the result printed out into the console, you have to actually wrap the function into the print statement. So if I run this, you will see the first prompt. So I'm going to say 5, 3, and then I'm going to plus it. So 8. Uh, and let's try one more time. So if I add uh, 50, 51, and plus, you will see 101 with the message, the value is greater than 100. And then if I run this just one more time to test uh, the operator provided is not valid, I'm going to say 3, 2, and percent sign, and you will see the message saying that operator provided is not valid. Okay, so in today's video, we've talked about the Python conditioners. I hope that this video was helpful. And as we get into more complex programming, we'll try to use these conditioner statements in various different ways. So please keep it tuned. And if you are here for the first time viewing my videos in this channel and found my videos useful and excited about the future upcoming videos or are curious about this course or the contents that I'll be posting into this channel, then please subscribe and like my videos. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next videos.